Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about EndNotes because that is an area that is often um, a little hairy. So whenever you're composing, um, excuse me, let me use the right terminology. Whenever you're writing your, uh, your manuscript, right, um, the way that you would add an EndNote um, embedded in note into Word, um, you would go over here to references. This is actually a Word feature. It's not part of the SAI. You go over here to references, right? And you have this option to insert footnotes or insert endnotes, right? And here we're inserting an endnote. So I'll just go ahead and insert one here just so that you can see. You'll click insert endnote. And what will happen is, is that the endnote will be inserted here automatically by Word. If you have the SAI installed, it should automatically be composed as enref for you. Um, because the SAI just does that within Word. If not, you can compose that style um, yourself or um, the better option, let the rendering option of the SAI do that for you when you have the document. Um, and then what you'll have here, um, you'll actually have where to add your text. And so we'll say text here down at the bottom and your endnotes will now be there and it's linked. So if you hover over it, you'll see that the text we just added is there. You also note that when we added that, uh, this isn't composed as the end num uh, for end note number. It's actually composed as end note reference, which is Word's default style for this. But we can easily compose this as en num, right? And so I'm just going to compose it, use it using the um, quick access bar up there just for the sake of time, right? But we just type in en num and hit enter. And now we have our composed EndNote. Well, actually, we can leave that in there um, for, for our next step. So that's how you add that in um, to, the, um, to the Word file. Tim has additions to this. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll just say typically, you know, this is something that your author has already done. Mm -hmm. you know, this is something they've done in actually authoring the text and adding notes. And I'll just jump in quickly to answer Mark's question about does InDesign strip out the endnote links to the text? So short answer, short answer, yes. Long answer, um, there's a new feature in the most recent version now where endnotes can be treated like footnotes where they are linked in InDesign. Uh, however, because we already know that in previous versions, um, there wouldn't be a necessarily a link back and forth. There are systems in place now that will automatically link the endnotes in going from Word to EPUB or InDesign to SDML and EPUB. So we have things in place already that handle the linking automatically because we know that InDesign doesn't have a, like a built-in or didn't have a built-in linking. Um, but we're now working on a version to experiment with treating our endnotes as linked like we do for footnotes. So um, it does strip them out, but there are things in place. Okay, and so at this point, we've run our cleanup tools. We have our mostly composed um, file, right? So we're going to go ahead and save it, right? Um, so we're going to go to File and Save. And just save that. Control S is the shortcut um, in on PC, right? And so now we're just going to close out of our document because we've already done most of the composition that we need to do. Now we're going to let the refiner do its work. And for these last uh, few moments of the class, we're going to show you how to um, get the refiner to work. So we're going to go ahead and close our document here. Right? And we're going to go ahead and open up a new, a new window. Right? And we'll say, we'll say here, not that new window. Right? And we're going to go to scribenet.com. And once we go to scribenet.com, we're going to go ahead and sign in. Remember that we sign in over here on the right uh, hand, top right hand side. Click on that. I'm already signed in, but just for the purposes of completion, I'm going to go ahead and sign myself out. Click on that and sign in. And I'm going to just use my autofill there. Put in the password and hit sign in. You won't see this screen. Um, likely you'll be taken directly to the hub, right? And so the refiner, right, which is now step 10 in our composition um, procedure, 
right? The refiner is part of the hub. Remember, the refiner is a tool within the digital hub, right? And in order to access it, we need to create a project, right? So we're going to go ahead and go to start new project, right? And this Tim showed us on the first day of class it allows us to fill in um, a lot of the metadata and whatnot that we need. In our case, we're not going to um, fill in all of the metadata. We're only going to fill in what is needed, right? So we're going to, for the code, remember that we um, assigned it the code OTN demo. Click this little check mark to see now it's saying that this one already exists. So I'll just call it OTN demo one, right? Because if there are multiple uh, codes, um, you need to have they need to be unique each and every one of them, right? So for our title, we're going to put in OTN demo, and then publisher we're just going to say scribe, right? We're not going to fill in the subject or any of that, right? Or the ISBN or the authors or any of that information, although that is available. Correct. Yeah. So if you are following along, as Tim has said, uh, please in your code, just you know, add in, I'll do this as well, I'll add in my initials, right there, just towards the end. Okay, so now that we have our metadata filled in, right, again, you can fill in the rest of the metadata for your individual projects. Here you can add creators if there's more than one author, or if there's an author and an editor that are um, both um, you know, credited, um, or any other contributors and things like that, right? So we're going to go over here to files, right? And we have no files, so it's going to say click upload to add file. So we're going to click upload here on the right. Click on upload, and it's going to bring us here. You can drag and drop your files here where it says upload your files here, or you can click, uh, click on here and it'll take you to where um, uh, whatever the default um, is on your PC. It might be different for yours, and then you can navigate to where um, your uh, file is. So our file is the OTN demo redo training. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and hit open. And what you'll see is you'll see that the file will appear here ready to be uploaded, and then we click upload files. All right. And here in the checks, you'll see Actually, let me not go that fast, right? So here you'll see all the files that you have uploaded. There, there are categories for files here. We only have the Word file um, in this instance, so we're just going to type in. Uh, we all, all we have here is MS Word, right? And we have the file that we just um, uploaded, right? And here we have the checks and stats uh, features of the hub, right? We went over this very briefly in our first lesson, right? And we're not going to get too in depth here, but the stats section gives you just that. It gives you stats of what styles are being used in the document. It gives you the special characters, right? And it gives you the images that are being uh, called to in your Word file, right? And here where you see normal web, it's saying, hey, you see that nice yellow? It's telling you this isn't an SML style. You should look into this. But we know that because our um, file had a lot of normal that we are just leaving as uh, normal because the refiner is going to take care of this now. So we are aware of this issue here, right? And so we'll close here. And then the checks give you that same warning and say, hey, you have non-SML style here and you have unstyled content throughout and it actually gives you where that unstyled content is, right? And so, but again, we are aware because our file is not fully composed and we're letting the refiner do some of the work for us or a good portion of it, right? And so we're gonna go up here to where it says MS Word. Here you'll see all the files or the file types that you have uploaded. Um, it defaults to Word here because that's the file that we have available. So we're gonna go ahead and what we want to select in this second box is refined MS Word document. And so you'll see here that that is the selections. Once you select, you'll see that the edit, edit settings is no longer grayed out. If you click on that, you'll have several settings that you can set up 
um, or um, activate or deactivate uh, depending on what you need. Articulate spacing distinctions for Word. This is what will have the hub go through and apply the PF, PF, first, last um, styles throughout. That is what articulating spacing distinctions uh, means. I will actually include a link after the class in the, um, in the syllabus to the articulate spacing distinction um, document on, um, on our website, right? And here you can apply. Oh, real quick. oh go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I just Tim. wanted to jump in and, and kind of relate that first thing back to uh, a concern that came up about whether with these large textbooks, are you going to be composing by hand every single paragraph? And that first option there, the articulator, that the spacing distinction, that's uh, where that comes into. We're not going to compose every single thing. We're going to kind of compose in broad strokes. Uh, we're going to identify lists just, just like NL or UL. And then that option there, that tool, is going to identify NLF, NLL, things like that. So for the most part, we're going to be just using these broad strokes. And then like Elvis said, we can kind of leave body text alone because anything that is going to become P later on will just be turned into P in the, uh, in the refiner. Correct. And so here, continuing on, right, um, you have apply SML template definitions, right? If you notice, there's this little I next to each option. This gives you a little description of what um, everything, uh, what that uh, specific option does, right? And so if at any point you're like, mm, I don't know what articulate spacing distinctions is really doing, um, you can click on that I and it'll give you the text. Um, for, so that you can know what you're selecting. So apply SML template definitions um, will make sure that, for example, that the eyes are, um, you know, are green and italic if, for example, the, um, you know, the author um, or you while you're composing it have accidentally changed eye to black or something like that. You can, um, you know, have this uh, selected and the, and the refiner will make sure that the template definitions are correct. You can convert uh, words um, embedded notes, which are the ones that we just saw um, before jumping over here to the hub, um, and it can convert them into plain text notes uh, for you. We're not going to have that selected because we don't need that in this option and then in this um, tutorial. And then the last two um, options are to place footnotes or endnotes at section breaks or, for example, at the end of chapters um, rather than at the end of a Word document. Um, so we are not going to select these because we don't need to worry uh, about notes for this case. So we're going to go ahead and save our settings. These are the default settings. So if you're working with multiple files and you don't want to go into, uh, or better said, multiple projects, and you don't want to go into each and every one and check these settings, these two are on by default, and these three are off by default. And so you can save. And we're going to go ahead and click Convert. And the hub will uh, give us this nice box telling us that the conversion is in progress. Depending on your file size, it may take, um, you know, anywhere from, you know, a couple seconds to, you know, a couple minutes. And so you'll see that the Word file has now been changed, right? And you have now our little checkbox or check um, circle, right, here is now green, right? Saying, oh, well, still showing me the old... Uh, warning, right? But our checkbox should um, show us that everything has been properly refined, right? So we're going to go down here, and if you click this button here, this will allow you to download the Word file. Um, you can also click here to download all, right? Um, just going back, we're going to go back right into draft view. We see that our document so far it's looking the same but once we come here remember that we left this as normal the the refiner has taken and composed that as p and because the refiner knows that this is the first paragraph in the chapter it has also made it pf you can see that here and you can see throughout that these nls that we had left alone now have nlf for numbered list first and numbered list last so our document is now refined. See these that we left as normal are now P and so on and so forth. For example, the block quote, it added the spacing distinction of S for standalone because it was 
a standalone block quote needing space above and space below and so on and so forth throughout the document here's that one that we had discussed that is not pecan because of the section break and continuing on let's go here equations don't get those first and last distinctions we have our sidebar here we see something interesting which is SBO that starts for us uh, a sidebar only and that means that there's a head above it and it needs space below no space above and it does not need indentation but that definition is something that you can define in uh, in design and so here we reach the end of our um, composition our file is now composed hooray 